As a young girl, I can remember going to my grandmother in tears, telling her my hair would not grow. I vividly remember those tears, and while I couldn't process it at the time, I know those tears were not just about hair. Those tears were more about me wanting to look good and feel good and being happy with who I was. It wasn't that my hair couldn't grow. It was simply breaking from too much manipulation, heat, and insufficient protection and nourishment. Today, I am proud to say that my work focuses on minimizing those tears for others. Some of you may be thinking, this is just hair, right? But hair can have a big impact on everyone. Think about your own hair or lack thereof. It can give you confidence, self-esteem, and it forms first impressions. So, this isn't just about hair. This is about everyone's desires to feel good about themselves and the science and solutions that help us to accomplish this goal. I am an organic chemist and a woman who struggled with the coily hair that emerges from my own head. It wasn't until I finally learned to embrace my natural hair and release the societal pressure to conform could I then begin my personal quest to use science to understand hair and then to work with teams to develop products that address the different challenges that people of diverse ethnicities face. For most of us, there is a common desire for the products that we use to make our hair look good and feel good and be more manageable. The ultimate goal? Healthy, strong hair so that we can express our uniqueness in the way that we want to. But why is our hair the way that it is? Well, it turns out that hair is a matter of evolution. While hair covers 95% of our body, it is the hair on our scalp that makes the biggest statement, with people having on average 100,000 hairs on their head. All right, now brace yourself. This may get a little technical for some. Scientifically, hair is primarily comprised of proteins that emerge from the hair follicle. The hair shaft consists of three main layers, the cuticles, the cortex, and the medulla. It also contains lipids, melanins, metals, and sugars. The cuticles play an important component in hair, helping to protect the internal structure from damage, like shingles on a roof of a house. Caucasian and Asian hair is typically round and oval. African ancestry hair has a flattened and elliptical shape, which is prone to twisting and knotting. The coils are believed to be caused by the shape, higher amounts of disulfide bonds, and compacted cysteine in the fiber. But is there a reason for the differences? Well, it turns out that there is a theory to support this. According to Clarence Robbins, world-renowned expert in hair, our African ancestors had extremely coily hair as a result of the adaptive needs of hot and humid locations like sub-Saharan Africa. It is believed that the elastic, coily, helix shape of the hair allowed for cool air circulation on the scalp and may have helped to regulate body temperature. As people of color migrated around the world, those tight coils for some begin to loosen. So, now that we've covered the who and the why, let's dig a little bit deeper into the what, or the science of hair. I'd like to highlight three key characteristics of hair. One that's already been mentioned, the cuticle layers, then waterproofing, and lastly, tensile strength. First, the cuticle layers. At every point that coily hair curves and bends, there's uplifting of cuticle and a potential breaking point. For hair that is naturally straight, there are on average six to 10 cuticle layers. But for African ancestry coily hair like mine, there can be as few as two cuticle layers in the curves and the bends of the hair. So the higher the number of the cuticle layers, the stronger the hair can be. The fewer the number of the cuticle layers, the more prone the hair is to experience breakage. Second, waterproofing. We all have a natural protective waterproofing layer on the outside of our hair fiber when it emerges from the scalp. This is a fatty acid called 18-methyl-icosanoic acid. When we brush, style, and chemically relax or color our hair, we strip this protective layer away, 
leaving cuticles exposed to damage and more porous hair. So, damaged cuticles and porous hair also leads to hair that's more prone to breakage. Lastly, the tensile strength. The tensile strength of coily hair can be significantly less than hair that is naturally straight. The fragility of coily hair has been brought to life through fatigue tests, which demonstrates how many cycles of stretching a hair fiber could withstand before breaking. For Caucasian women, 35,000 cycles. For black women with coily hair, 5,500 cycles. And for black women with relaxed hair, only 550 cycles before the hair breaks. So, when women with coily hair or relaxed hair tells me that their hair won't grow, to that I simply say, no, your hair is growing. It's just breaking before you realize any noticeable difference in the length. So, now that we've covered the technical part, thanks for sticking with me on it, and we better understand the science of our hair, particularly the nuances of African ancestry hair, what can we do about it, and how can we better care for our hair? For many decades, women of color have been on this constant quest to find the right products for them. According to Mintel, the black hair care industry is valued at over $2.5 billion, with 43% of women using five or more products in their hair care routine to cleanse, condition, and style. For me, I know that on any given basis, I've had an excessive amount of products, from shampoos to conditioners to concentrated natural oils, creams, and gels, as I perfected my cocktail of products to get the benefits and the look that I want. With this extremely high valuation of the black hair care industry and many women of color using an excessive amounts of products daily, you'd think more attention would be paid to this population's hair and their buying power. Historically, and unfortunately, this hasn't been the case. But it is changing. When I realized this untapped market and unmet need, as a black woman, a chemist, and a mom, I found myself thinking, could this trial and error approach be due to the lack of definitive knowledge of the exact needs and wants of people with hair like mine? Or could it be due to societal beauty pressures to conform? Or could it be that historically, the people in the boardrooms and in the labs didn't, and still in many cases, don't look like me? nor do they share in our journey to finding a solution to our hair care needs. This is why I am passionate about developing products rooted in science to give people of color more and better options than what has been historically available to us. I am a part of a team of scientists who work to understand more about this unique hair fiber. We are technologists who've modeled the twists, turns, and bends of hair to understand the critical places where it needs protection and care the most. We are chemists who have identified active ingredients in the hair that can mimic that natural protective waterproofing layer. We are researchers who have experimented and identified ingredients that can penetrate into the hair fiber, protecting the proteins and lipids from damage. We are a team who's personally experienced the challenges, and we know what's missing in products for healthy, strong hair. Over the past few years, our team of scientists have harvested and analyzed hair across multiple ethnicities. The results show that naturally relaxed hair and coily hair simply need way more moisturization and protection than what products on the market were able to provide. With this knowledge, we develop and create new and more effective products that better meet the needs for those with curly and coily hair. While this may not sound that groundbreaking to some, I ask you to think about engineering hair products with especially charged ingredients that can target and then penetrate into the damaged areas of the hair fiber, providing protection and nourishment exactly in the places where it needs it the most, in the twists, turns, and bends of the hair. By understanding what is needed in the science of our hair, we create products for healthy, coily hair, no matter the style that is chosen. 
And as we crack the code for the coiliest of the coily hair, people around the world have begun to embrace the products. The best part? Our team of scientists are only getting started. My journey, it's not only scientific, but it's also very personal. Fifteen years ago, I found myself immersed in a career that merged two loves, science and beauty. Today, I am committed to understanding the science of beauty, exactly what is needed, and developing products for people who have been traditionally underrepresented. My daughter, Ava, has naturally coily hair. I want her to grow up fully appreciating it. And I'd love it if one day she didn't cry those same tears that I cried as a young girl, with broken hair and a broken spirit. And maybe, just maybe, one day, she may carry the torch, continuing to unearth the beauty of science and the science of beauty. <laughs>